to week four. Can you believe it? We're on week four already. Um, I'm Robin Withrow Wong, and we are talking about plant based nutrition. If you're new to me this week, and if you haven't seen the first few weeks, um, you can do those by um, going to um, a YouTube link, okay? And so you will find that um, um, on the screen. And also, if you want to know what recipes we've done, you can go to the tinyurl.com forward slash ACC plant based. Um, there it is on the screen as well. And you will find not only recipes, but a few handouts and resources that I um, have left for you. And I did have a question about um, resources, about books, about plant-based nutrition. And I, I have several. And so those will also, I'll, put, I'll upload those into that URL, okay? And that way you'll have them. And it, let me know if there's anything uh, you specifically not want, like especially if it's relating to heart disease or diabetes or cholesterol, right? The beauty of plant-based nutrition is eating this way helps you avoid all those diet-related diseases like that, okay? Um, and so it's really um, a healthful way to eat. And it's pretty easy. As if you've been with me this week, you know, these last few weeks, you'll, you'll see that. So, so what are we going to talk about this week? Well, first I want to review what we've done in the last few weeks, okay? So week one, this is our quick review. Uh, we talked about the correlation between diet-related diseases and the foods we eat. And if we're e eating the standard American diet, like many of us do, then we certainly have a higher risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, high um, cholesterol levels, high blood pressure, right? Higher cancer risks, you know, higher weight, okay? And that's what we're going to talk about today is um, healthy weight. So all those things, and it's all by the foods we eat and the habits we have around those, all right? So um, in week one, we talked about six steps to, you know, find better health. And those were to reduce the saturated fats that are found in meat and dairy products, all right? Uh, to avoid added oils, uh, you know, in, and avoid processed foods. And sometimes the added oil comes in ways of how you cook, like sautéing things or... Um, Almost everything starts with saute this in oil, right? Well, you, there's tips to, to avoid doing that and avoiding those processed foods that often have added oil in them. And so we talked about, you know, in future weeks about reading labels. We talked about don't drink your calories. Uh, so often we um, drink f beverages that are super high in calories and add saturated fats to our diets, okay? And so just know that it's okay. Just know that you're getting a lot of calories in there and that's maybe not filling you up the way you want, okay? And then the other thing was to um, adapt your favorite recipes, all right? So the way you make this become a lifestyle, the way you're able to live this way is to eat the foods you love just find a healthier way to prepare them, okay? And maybe it's a changing the ratios. Maybe you use a little bit of meat in that recipe and a lot more vegetables and you add beans and legume, you know, legumes and lentils or whatever it is to it, all right? So it's just like you don't have to change everything. It's just learning to tweak um, your recipes a little bit and, and maybe leave the oil out or whatever it is. And so just know that uh, it is possible to eat the foods you love. And then the last thing was to actually eat more, not less. So when you're choosing foods that are more nutrient dense, they have lower calories. So you can eat them, more of them, right? It's kind of a great thing eating plant-based. You eat all the time. And so you're really never hungry and you just don't gain weight because it's almost impossible to overeat when you're eating foods that are nutrient dense and are lower in calories, okay? And it's more than salads, I can tell you that. Week two, we jumped in. We talked about how to set yourself up for success, okay? Um, oh, thank you. Uh, uh, reading labels. We looked at label reading and how I wanted you to focus on those saturated fats, okay, and all the added fats um, in your diet. And, and we talked about how to read the ingredient list and the first... Um, item on that list is what's the most in there, right? And, you, and I gave you some handouts for that, so you can go back and look at that. And we talked about meal planning and how important uh, that is, because when you're, you're planning, you uh, actually make better choices, okay? 
Um, and this also helps with your budget, okay? Because you're not just buying things. You got to be able to kind of shop and co price compare and, and that sort of thing. And then we talk about stocking your pantry. And honestly, the soup we're going to do today, we're making soup today. And the soup we're doing today is all things that we can have ready to go between our pantry and our freezer, all right? And so you can have an instant meal like that. And um, it'll, it's, just, it's awesome when you can have a healthy meal at your fingertips. And then we talk about batch cooking. And soup is a really good example of that because you can cook a big batch of it, either feed a whole bunch of people, or you can also portion it out and feed yourself over a period of time by either freezing it or eating leftovers, okay? And then, remember on week two, we made that sesame noodle salad uh, with cabbage and noodles and all those things, so, and with no oil, and I showed you how to use tahini. So that recipe's in the tiny URL uh, Dropbox that you can find that recipe, all right? Okay, so in week three, we talked about eating plant-based, and I abbreviated here on the screen. So sometimes you'll see PB or WFPB for whole foods plant-based as an acronym um, while you're out and about. And we talked about eat the, eating out in restaurants. It, sometimes it's just fun to eat out, right? Of course, cooking for yourself is one of the easiest ways to eat healthy because you, you're in control of what you're eating. But eating out, sometimes you don't want to have to cook. You want to do something social. It's You're traveling, right? And so there's a way. We, I gave you some tips on how to eat out, um, if you remember that. And that was just last week. We talked about traveling and how planning is really important. You can take a little ice chest. You can travel with food. Um, in fact, I recommend it because you never know how long if you're traveling by air where you're going to get stuck or how long you're going to be stuck in the airport, right? And so as long as you don't take anything liquid through the TSA, you're, you're good to go. Uh, don't take overnight oats because they won't let those through. Ask, I, I know that. I tried it. <laughs> um, and then holidays. Holidays are a big one for people, okay, because there's all these foods that bring back memories and, and all that. And, and it's okay. It's just one meal. But if you still want to make healthful choices, there's ways of doing that. You can make many of the side dishes in a more healthful way. Uh, you can eat less of the main dish and more of the side dishes and um, the, you know, the, the yummy stuff that you like. Um, and just remember, it's one meal. And, and then again, really focus on the people. That's why we're there, to spend time with our friends and family. And then I, I talked about common questions that you often get when you talk about being plant-based. And those were like, remember, how do you get your protein? What about calcium? Uh, some of those other things. And so, again, some of those resources are in that um, drop box for you. And last week, we made the brown rice salad. So you can use it for your leftover rice, and you can use all your vegetables that your friends are giving you out of their gardens, right? Okay, so that has brought us up to today. And here we are, week four already. Ah, oh, it's been so fun. I hope you've learned a lot. And I've got to say, ACC has done a wonderful job of hosting me and these, um, these sessions. And so it's such a great resource to bring us together. And I can share what I know, and we can spend this time together, and I can answer questions. So what are you going to learn today? Uh, we are talking about healthful weight management. Now, this might not be an issue for you. Maybe you're, you already are able to manage your weight. But what we, I see happening sometimes as we age, um, you know, the weight sort of comes on a little here, a little there, right? And over five years, you might be carrying an extra 10 pounds. And, and so a couple things happen. You know, um, we maybe move around a little bit less than we did before. Maybe we are, um, you know, eating foods that might be a little richer than we did before, right? Because we're not cooking for ourselves as much. Uh, all those things happen. And our metabolism certainly slow down, as well as even just, just from aging, unless we're really cognizant of it, we do lose a little muscle mass every year. And so it's really hard to keep that up unless you're exercising a lot. And that means, you know, weight bearing and resistance training, okay? So, um, so it, it, how do you manage your weight? So there are some tricks, and I thought we'd talk about it. But what I first wanted to talk about is why dieting just doesn't work long term. And, you know, as a culture, we really um, uh, focus on dieting a lot. In fact, 
if you're diagnosed with diabetes, one of the things your doctor may tell you is to lose weight, right? But it's not that easy. It's just not that easy to lose weight. So, um, you know, my background as a dietitian is the non-diet approach. And it's really to focus on um, tuning in to your hunger and fullness cues and checking in. It's this mindful way of eating, checking in with, ah, am I hungry or why do I want to snack on that food? And so it's kind of um, asking yourself some questions as you go along. So we're going to talk about that. And then I'm going to talk about calorie density and nutritional density, okay, the difference between those two things and why a calorie just isn't a calorie. Okay, it's just not, you would think it is, but it's not. And why you feel full, something called volumetrics is kind of a new way of thinking about how your stomach fills up. And we're, then we're going to have a cooking demo. Okay, so that's what we're doing today. And let's see, let's jump into uh, find your healthful weight. All right, and that is different for everybody. And when I say find your healthful weight, we all know where we feel good with our weight, all right? And I really would love everybody to get rid of their scales, okay? Get, get weighed when you go to the doctor, but you don't need to weigh yourself every day because we get really tied into that number. And yet our body composition starts to change with time. So um, really know, make sure your weight is appropriate for your age. Um, maybe you weigh the same you did in high school, but if you don't, it's okay, all right? I mean, everyone is different. Um, Find a weight that is maintained without constant dieting, okay? Uh, just, you know, be able to eat your normal way and maintain your weight so you don't have these huge fluctuations of highs and lows. Because honestly, that, that, um, that going high weight and then dropping the weight off and then doing that repeatedly, that kind of yo-yoing um, or cycling is actually harder on your health than just being slightly overweight, okay? So just keep that in mind. The other thing is, what about your family history and, and your body shape and, and weight, right? Because um, sometimes, just like you can't change your shoe size, you might not be able to weight, change how your body is shaped. So kind of embrace that, right? And then find a helpful weight that promotes good eating habits and allows you for regular physical activity. So if your weight's at a level where you can get out and still move comfortably, you can get in and out of your chair comfortably, all those things, maybe that's a great weight for you, all right? So maybe the number on the scale doesn't read where you want it to be, but maybe, you know, that's where you need to be right now, okay? So that's kind of what I want you to think about when you're thinking about your weight. Okay, the next thing is we have, so let's talk about dieting. Uh, I alluded to it a little bit a few slides ago. If diets worked, okay, if they truly worked, we wouldn't have to keep going on them, right? I mean, it's kind of, um, I think a lot of these, the diet industry wants you to keep going on. That's how they make money. Um, and so what, what they're lacking, um, they're definitely lowering your calories so you do lose weight. But what, what's lacking in a lot of the dieting programs is that they don't teach you the lifestyle skills, the habits to help you carry it forward. So you're on the diet, and then you go back to your old way of eating, and that's when you gain the weight. And that's where that white weight cycling starts to happen, right? So um, really, it's better to you know um, just establish better habits, okay? And that's what we're trying to do with the plant-based lifestyle. Find what you like to eat, Let's find a way to make it a little more healthy for you, add some vegetables to it, add some more fiber to it, and that will help you keep your weight um, under control, all right? Um, and then the next thing about diets is there's a lot of restriction and deprivation. Um, have any of you tried the no-carb, low-carb diet? If you have diabetes, I'm sure you have heard of that. And, you know, what I know, I work with um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, a lot. And the plant-based lifestyle makes a huge difference. It really does, okay? Just know that. So, um, and you can eat more, not less, all right? And we'll get to that. Um, the other thing is BMI, body mass index, and these ideal body weight measurements, um, you know, they're, they're not really a good measure of health uh, for you on an individual basis. There are more measures to use in a population they're more measures that we use in the hospital when we don't know that patient 
and they come in and we just kind of have to assess quickly. We need to know kind of what, when, especially from a dietetic standpoint, where how many calories we need to be feeding them, right? And when they're in the hospital, they're, they're just a general measure. And so when people get really tight into those, um, trying to reach a certain number, um, it's, it's really difficult. And sometimes they do things that maybe aren't as healthy to try to reach those numbers. So let me give you an example about body mass index, BMI. There's a whole calculation you go through with it, and you're either normal weight, overweight, or obese, right? And there's a big range in each of that. When I was down in Fiji, um, a lot of those people I, I worked with, they were very muscular. So very muscular people might have um, a high BMI, but yet it's from their muscle. So it, it skews the numbers. So it's not a perfect scenario. It, it is something we use, but just know that it's not perfect, okay? That's all you need to know on that. Uh, so what is the new approach? The new approach in dietetics, and the, the, what I kind of, um, how I work with my clients, is this non-diet intuitive eating, right, that I wanted to talk to you about. Really checking in with your hunger and fullness and having a scale and kind of understanding, oh, where am I on this? Am I really hungry or am I thirsty? Or am I really hungry or, I'm, or am I bored, okay, or sleepy? It's really kind of checking in. And then as you eat, you know, eat and then check in again. How full am I? Could I eat a little bit more? Okay, and then and you kind of play with it. You know, as children, as babies, we are intuitive eaters. Over time, we lose those skills. If you've been taught to clean your plate, you've been taught not to waste food, you've been taught that, oh, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, um, throw anything away. Those are all good things, but this means you have to take smaller portions to start with, right? And so that you can really check in with your intuitive eating. And then, like I said, those, those hunger fullness cues, okay? So that's what, um, and here's a hunger fullness scale. It's kind of fun. Uh, I, it's funny, I, I taught my kids this early on, and sometimes they'll tell me, oh, you know, I'm at a 10, but it tastes so good, I'm going to eat to an 11. And that's a choice. You can do that, all right? But you're also knowing that after you do that, this might be a Thanksgiving meal, after you do that, you're probably going to be a little miserable. But when it's going down, it tastes delicious, right? And so you don't want to get too hungry either on the other end, on the one end, because when you're at the one, two, and three, you start getting really hungry, and sometimes you, you get too hungry, and then you make bad choices. You make poor choices, you, you know, for your health, okay? So just know that. So that, that'll be in the drop box. You can play at that scale a little bit if you want. So what about calorie density versus nutritional density? Um, you know, why is a calorie not just a calorie? So what we know is that, you know, fat has more calories per gram, right? And it's basically, you know, excess dietary fat tends to um, accumulate fat in, a, in a, higher, a higher amount, okay, compared to excess dietary carbohydrates. So if you are overeating the amount of calories you burn, and those calories come from a fat source, that's where your, your meat and dairy and your um, added oils are, right? If you're eating more of those, those get stored way easier in your body, okay? It takes nothing for your body to store those, okay? In fact, there's like a 90, 95% efficiency um, for dietary fat to get stored. Now, when you overeat carbohydrates, which if you're eating your, um, you know, your vegetables or your legumes or say your whole grain pasta, um, those things, you can overeat those and you might not burn off those calories, although those get burned off first. But those calories don't get stored as efficiently. So, and they get stored not only, um, they get stored in your muscles first, they get stored in your livers first as it breaks down to glucose, right? And it gets stored in your muscles as glycogen. They get stored, um, and then it has to go through a little rigmarole to get stored as fat, whereas fat does not. So you actually burn a few calories to store it, okay? Not a lot, but a little bit. So just know that that's why a calorie is not a calorie. And not even in the density, in the sense that you have more calories per gram, nine calories per gram with the fat versus nine, uh, four calories per gram for a protein or carbohydrate, all right? So when you eat something with fat, you're doubling your calories right off the, off, off the top, all right? And we talked about that earlier in, the, in, in one of the sessions. So 
like I said, carbs, you know, they do turn to fat if you eat too many, but it takes a little bit more, whereas fat gets stored way easier, okay? So just know that um, calorie density refers to how much energy is in the food, sort of high calories. Um, and like, think about French fries. Say, take, two, take a potato, okay? When you use a potato and you turn it into a French fry, unless you bake them like I do, if, you, if they're deep fried, you've now added oil to them, right? Now they become very calorie dense. If you keep the potato and you put it in a soup or you just bake it or, you know, however, and eat it plain, it's very nutritionally dense. It still has all of its nutrients without those added calories, okay? It has all the fiber. And so anytime you process something, um, remember, you lose a lot of the fiber and you lose a lot of the nutrition, all right? So I just want you to kind of have that in the back of your mind. So here's a picture of a lot of um, high fiber foods. And I just wanted to throw them in here really quick. Uh, we've already covered fiber, but I, I want you to um, think about fiber as your friend, okay? And what is fiber? You know, there, there are foods that have, that I'm showing you, all the whole foods, right? Your legumes, your peas, your lentils your sweet potatoes, your, um, your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains, right? And all those have their fiber in them and they're so full of nutrients, okay? And, and so that's, that's the beauty of eating more of those foods because those foods will fill you up, all right? So let's go into how do you feel full, okay? This is really interesting. So um, um, a researcher named Dr. Bi Barbara Roll, um, and I think I put in the Dropbox a little short video by her that you might enjoy listening to her speak about her um, research and, and what volumetrics is. But it's real, she was looking at how the stomach responds to weight, not calories. So your, your stomach doesn't go, oh, I'm at 2,000 calories, I'm full. It doesn't respond, it responds to weight, okay? So that's where the high fiber, um, the whole unprocessed foods are, are heavier, right? So your stomach will respond to them. And then also your stomach responds to foods that have water content in them because water's pretty heavy, right? And, and has zero calories. So you think of soups and fruits and vegetables, okay? Um, and, and those all have the water in them those make you feel full. And this is how you keep your weight under control because you're able to eat more of these foods and you fill up and you don't eat as much, okay? Plus these foods are naturally lower in calories, okay? So think about grapes versus raisins. Same fruit, right? But the grapes are, a juicy grape has a ton of water in it where the raisin, that's what it is, it's dried. The water's now been removed. So when you compare them, you know, you can, eat the same number of calories, um, the whole grapes, it'd take a lot more, a lot less to fill up. You'd probably not eat the same number of calories as you would with the raisins. Now, did I say don't eat raisins? No, raisins are delicious. They're a great um, food in your oatmeal to take as a snack, all those things. They're still super high in fiber, but just know that, um, you know, they lack the water. So you can, you can eat a lot more of those calories than you could eat the whole grape. And it was really interesting. Some people used to always tell me their trick was to uh, drink a glass of water before they'd eat, right? So they wouldn't eat as much. Well, she actually found in her research that a glass of water, your, your, your stomach is really smart. A glass of water doesn't do the same thing, okay? Um, it's the water and foods. And it must be the combination with the fiber, maybe. Because if you just drink a glass of water it didn't seem to have the same effect on your stomach of, of telling you you weren't hungry anymore, all right? So, so I hope you find that interesting. I thought this was a really cool visual. I wanted to share it with you. So this is your stomach. This is the, a visual of your stomach. And each of the stomachs that you're seeing on the screen have 500 calories, all right? So if you look at the first stomach that says oil, so you can barely see it, but it's not even hardly full, okay? And that's your 500 calories. You're not going to feel full at that, right? And then it goes to the cheese, which a lot of people like, right? They have the cheese. And so that's 500 calories of cheese. It's a little bit fuller. And then you go to the adding meat. And so, you know, it's a little bit fuller. So where I would like to have you focus is on that potatoes, beans, and rice, and fruits and veggie, veggies in, 
those last two stomachs because see how full your stomach is? And that's why you're going to feel satiated and you're going to feel full and not deprived. And, you know, a lot of people eat a lot of salads because that's how they manage their weight. But what they're missing out on is adding, add some beans or add some quinoa to that salad because it will really um, trigger that fullness in your stomach and it'll stay with you longer, okay? And you'll certainly feel full. Okay, so as we move on, Okay, so what is a key to better health? Um, so to avoid diet-related disease, of course, try to eat more plant-based, right? And that means focusing on the whole foods. I know many of you do that already, um, but really start changing that ratio on your plate. If you can steer away from um, some of the fried foods and steer away from some of the, um, the meat products, Maybe eat less of that and eat more of your vegetables and legumes and, you know, beans. It will certainly um, improve your health because we know that there's, um, you know, a correlation between the saturated fats and cholesterol found in animal products versus those found in plant-derived products, okay? So, um, so focus on whole foods. Uh, limit foods with saturated fat like I just talked about and the added oils. Remember, read your labels. A lot of processed foods um, have added oils in them. Uh, so just, you have to read labels. You just do. Uh, limit the processed foods and drinks, okay? They're a treat, but make them a treat. It's when it becomes a habit that you have to kind of, because remember, we're looking at a whole pattern. Here and there isn't a big deal. It's like, what is the pattern of eating and, and how well are you doing? Are you, are you getting more plant foods into your diet 90% of the time, 75% of the time? That's awesome, right? Okay, that's what we're focusing on. And then eat more fiber. Eat more fiber not only for, um, you know, healthful weight control, but also because, you know, it just makes you feel not deprived, okay? And you feel full and you can eat more and more frequently if you do that, all right? So I, to, another key to better health is to keep your weight in a healthful range, okay? Does it have to be a certain number? No, you can fluctuate, but what is healthy for you? Okay, that's what I want you to really focus on. What is healthy for you? So, um, and what does that mean? It means to focus on your hunger and fullness cues. Okay, kind of play with that. It's sort of fun. Um, when you're out eating with your friends, say, oh, I think I'm at a, a, an eight right now. I think I'm going to back away or something like that. Okay, um, maybe take the rest of it home for, for later. Uh, um, you know, when you eat out, it's another tip. When you eat out, you can always split an entree because the entrees are so big, right? And you save money and you don't overeat. Um, also, to keep your weight in a healthful range, you know, replace things. Don't restrict. We know as soon as you tell yourself you can't have something, that's all you think about, okay? It's like, oh, those cookies are calling my name. I can hear them. It's all you focus on. And so, it's all right. You can have a few cookies. You can even maybe find a cookie that, um, I have some plant-based ones, I'll have to share recipes, um, that you can eat a cookie that's more healthful for you, but it's still a treat, right? So replace, don't restrict. And then um, eat foods high in fiber and water. Remember Dr. Barbara Roll's research that, you know, those foods are going to fill you up. And, lot, and where do you find those foods? In the plant-based world, okay? You just do. That's the, they're the more the whole foods. The less processed, the better. Does that mean you have to eat raw? No. Cook your food if you like that. Eat raw if you like it. Um, you know, there's a lot of benefits to eating cooked foods. And so, um, you know, it, do what you like. Just try to eat more whole foods, okay? So let's make some soup, okay? So what we're going to do today um, is we're going, I'm going to show you a recipe that was, um, you can make completely out of your pantry and out of your freezer. And just so you know, this is our fourth session, but I am back in November, on November 15th. And we're going to get you all prepped for Thanksgiving, okay? So make sure you watch for um, me in November, and I'll meet you in the kitchen, okay?
Okay, here we are in the kitchen. Isn't this awesome what ACC does for us? They put put a nice little kitchen for us and we got we got lecture, we got kitchen. It's like you I wish you could see what's going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of a lot of hands moving around, a lot of orchestration. They do a wonderful job. So here we are in the kitchen. Uh, I'm making a soup. It's kind of got a funny name. It's called Susan's Dirty Little Secret Soup. And the woman that wrote the recipe, uh, she has a blog. In fact, she has great recipes. I've been following her for many, many years, and I've watched her evolve as a, a blogger. But uh, her name is Susan, by the way. And she talks about this soup as being one of those that, you know, we talked about eating more fiber and eating um, water in your diet. Well, soup is the perfect thing for that, right? So think about so many cultures that will start their meals with soup, right, before they actually have their main entree. And I'm not talking about, you know, the cream soups. I mean, although you can make those in a plant-based way. I'm talking about, you know, one full of vegetables, and that's what we're going to do today. But the beauty of this is, you know, sometimes you haven't gone to the market, right? Sometimes you, you don't know, what am I going to make? Well, you can keep all these ingredients in your freezer and in your pantry, and you can whip it together to really quick, okay? So here are the ingredients. It's pretty simple. So, um, you know, I use, I use this um, vegetable stock. You can actually um, get the, you can buy this. I usually find it on sale. And you can make your own veg, veggie stock if you want to. But, um, I mean, I like the kitchen best basics the best, okay? There's a lot of different ones. You can choose what you like. Um, and so for this recipe, you'll need one of these boxes and then maybe an added cup of water. That's what I typically do. Now, in a pinch, you can use um, a vegetable bouillon, okay? And the thing about this is if you read the label on the back, it does have some palm oil in it, okay? So I don't use this very often. I just do not, okay? Um, I do keep it in my pantry for those, those times where I don't have any vegetable stock. Uh, I can tell you, you can use water in as well. Um, just you need to season it some more, maybe add more tomatoes, maybe throw in um, you know, um, a little tomato sauce to give it a more tomato base. There's a lot of things you can do. But this, you know, it doesn't have a ton of oil in it. But it just, no, it's one of those things that you'd go, why don't they have oil in this? Well, they do, okay? But it, in a pinch, and think about it, use one of these in a whole um, soup pot. It's not that much, okay? So just know that that is an option. I use it occasionally. I usually will use this first, okay? So we had the vegetable broth. And like I said, I'm going, and I just have a, a soup pot, okay? And I just pour it in. It's pretty simple, right? Just kind of got it going in. This is like the easiest thing ever. Like I said, if you want to um, make your own veggie broth, go for it. I used to do more of that. I um, do less of it now. And then I would probably like I said this is this is 32 ounces, so there's like four cups. So I might add you know an additional a cup of water. Depending on what sort of things I put in, if I put in any noodles or any quinoa or anything like that, you'll definitely need to add more water, okay? So that's that. The next thing is your diced tomatoes. You can have these in, in your pantry, okay? Ready to go. I use diced tomatoes in so many things, right? So I typically try to um, buy the low sodium if I can. These are not, because not what I had, but... Um, and I, I know like certain stores like Costco doesn't have the low sodium, but if they do, then um, I would buy those. I, try, I typically try to buy them on sale and stock up, okay? So dump this in, that's it. And what I would typically do is I would probably add water in this and then dump that in as well, okay? And just another added you know, thing of water, kind of rinse it out, get the flavor. So there's that. And then I already went ahead and did the beans. So... And she, Susan, used um, great northern beans, okay, and kidney beans. Now, these say they're organic because that's all they had when I went to buy them, all right? I don't know if you can see them. But they're a white bean. You could probably do, um, I don't know the difference between great northern beans and cannelli beans, 
or white kidney beans, okay? Um, you can honestly use any beans you want, all right? Whatever you like. This is the beauty of cooking, all right? You can mix and match. It's kind of, you know, if this, this soup goes together and you can literally use kind of what you have in your pantry, okay? You could have done two cans of kidneys or two cans of the white beans or, or whatever, right? So you can almost mix the flavors up and do it with black beans and then do more um, uh, spicy flavors, but we're not doing that today. So, and then, so we dump those in. And so what I did is I typically, um, I will take my beans and I will dump them in and then I will rinse them under the sink, okay? You know, rinse, rinse them out. So, and then I'll drain them really good. And I've already done that and that's where I've got the beans here, okay? And so we dump these in. Isn't this easy? It's like open and dump. Literally, the only things you need are like a can opener, which like, haven't even used, I already opened them before I got, got here, and a strainer, okay, that's, and, that's, that's, and a pot and a stove, okay, it's super easy. Okay, then the next thing is we add, oh, I didn't get my veggies out, excuse me for a second. This was the tough thing of having to bring veggies frozen. I had to get to my freezer. <laughs> so frozen vegetables, okay, so I used the Italian blend, okay, you, oops, did I cover it here, let me see like an Italian blend, and they're frozen. So think about it. As these defrost, it's gonna add a little bit of water, more water to your, to your soup, okay? These, no chopping. These are already chopped for you, okay? So I found this recipe when I had broken my arm and I couldn't chop anything, okay? And so I was like, I need, I need something fast. And this was like the ticket I could, I could barely open the, the can, but it all worked. So you dump in two of these. Now, here's the thing. If you have um, fresh vegetables, go ahead and use those. Use about two pounds of fresh veggies, okay? Um, mix and match. If you could use a bag of these and then like how I said, I have spinach, I put spinach in everything. Maybe chop in some fresh spinach and throw it in, okay? Complete option. I mean, you can do all types of things. But I really wanted to show you something that you could do um, without having, if you, at that time you had nothing in your refrigerator fresh, okay? And you're like, I, I want to make something healthy, right? So you put those in. It says four cloves of garlic, okay? Now here's the thing. Can you see that? This way. <laughs> okay. I... I'm kind of lazy, and I'm not that great with a knife, okay? So I use the pre minced garlic, okay? Because <laughs> I just, you know, that whole peeling and chopping. Now, I know it's not as great, but, um, you know, do you do you. I mean, it's like if you like chopping it and don't mind that, go for it. If not, do what I do. I'd cheat a little. I mean, it's all right. It's all right. Make it easy on you, okay? So I put, like... You know, I like a lot of garlic, so I put like two tablespoons in, and then I'd probably even add a little garlic powder. This depends after I taste it, okay? So the garlic goes in. Now we go to our spices, okay? So we have basil, thyme, oregano, okay? Can you see those? And then pepper and some Tabasco, all right? So here's, the, here's another trick is that you can actually buy um, probably an Italian spice, the all-in-one, okay, um, if you choose to. And so it's like one thing, it'll say Italian spice, and it'll have all these things in them. I think they might throw in a little marjoram and a few other things as well. Um, and so just know that, and the ratios might be a little different, but it would completely work, okay? And we're just kind of going for a little bit of the flavor. So it calls for a teaspoon of your basil. Now, Another thing, too, I forgot to tell you, you can actually use fresh if you choose, okay? Um, if you have it in your garden, by all means, use the fresh, all right? But again, if you don't have that and you have this in your pantry, you're good to go, okay? And so just know that that's an option as well. So basil, it calls, calls for um, one teaspoon. So we do that. All right, and then, and I actually like the leaves uh, of the oregano and thyme. You can do the ground if you choose, okay? 
Um, and then uh, the oregano, it calls for a half teaspoon. It's a little bit less. And again, if you have the fresh, that's awesome. And a half teaspoon of the thyme. Okay. And then a shake or two, it says, of your Tabasco, okay? Now, if you have sriracha, or I know we use a little chili um, uh, paste in, I think, the sesame salad that we did a few weeks ago, um, by all means, you can use that, all right? And then it's the, the I use, like to use fresh ground pepper, kind of to taste, okay? And how I like to do it as well is after it's cooked up, I will probably sprinkle ground pepper on top before I serve it. Now, that is it. You basically stir it up. Now, and as you bring it to a boil and the, you simmer it for about 20 minutes, okay? 20 to 30 minutes, make sure your everything's thing. Now, what you can do is you can add potatoes, okay? Um, if you have diabetes, you know, potatoes are okay is what you put on them, but choose the potatoes that are a little denser. So like red potatoes or the Yukon gold potatoes, okay? Um, just know that cut them small. If you're going to put them into the soups, take and make them uniforms so that they cook. And so check the potatoes before you take it off the stove to make sure they're cooked through. Another thing for if you have diabetes, um, sweet potatoes, you know, or like the yams, those would be delicious in here. And so those are really good. You can also add uh, quinoa. Okay, we have some quinoa. You can cook. Now, if typically how I would do this, if I had leftover quinoa, I would probably throw a half cup in. Okay, uh, if you want to throw it in dried like that, you can easily do that. Just add a little more water. Okay, and just make sure you do that. So um, you can add, um, since this kind of has a little minestrone sort of thing, you know, feel to it, you can do the little small little noodle shells, like you put you know, a half cup of those in and give it that, and you'll need to add a little bit more water, okay? So those are some of the options, and those options are listed on the, um, on the recipe as well. Play with it, make it your own. You can, you know, if you added the whole grains in, you would have a whole meal. And even now, you have a whole meal, okay? So, so that is it. So this is what it kind of looks like. So after you make this big pot, and you're like, oh, it's just me. What am I going to do, right? Well, you can, you can por portion it out, and you can have lunch. Okay, okay. first of all, you can invite, invite all your friends over and have, have a soup night and play games and, and do cards. Or you can portion it out for, you know, if you go to work, you can take it or um, keep it in the fridge this way. Or you can freeze it, okay? Put it in um, containers and put it in the freezer. And then you have a meal any night that you need, okay? And it's already cooked. So, so that is it. That is Susan's Dirty Little Secret Soup. Start your meals with soup, okay? And uh, you'll, get f you'll, hit, you'll hit your hunger and full your fullness scale um, maybe before you finish your entree, right? So just know that it's a great way to get all your vegetables in. If you look at all the different colors, remember at one point I said try to eat in a rainbow, right? Because the more variety you eat, the more nutrients and vitamins you get, okay? And so just think about that. You can do that in soup. It's, it's, a, it's a great option. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, so that is, that is our soup for the day. Uh, do I have any questions at all? No questions? Okay, so I want to thank ACC for having me, and I want to thank all of you for taking your time to join me. It has been pretty awesome um, having you here, and I will be back November 15th. I think it's from 5 to 6, so watch for that in the flyers. You'll, you'll see more about that, I'm sure, as we get closer. Thank you, and have a super great day.